Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an impressionist realist painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, pen and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. Hello, everyone, and it is a, another episode of the Artist Friends Podcast. My name is Clyde J. Kell. This is episode 90 for March the 29th, and I am here with my two best artist friends, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson. Hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hello, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hello, Clyde. Hello, Diane. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our listeners. Thank you, too, for joining me once again for a, another inspirational talk with the Artist Friends Podcast. Okay, for our listeners, if you go to www.talkartpodcast.com, that's talkartpodcast.com, you'll see our two recommended videos for our discussions. And we are going to discuss the Impressionist and Post-Impressionist art movement. And specifically, the two videos seem to concentrate on uh, the artist uh, Cezanne and uh, Paul Surratt. And uh, Diane, you want to start the conversation off? Uh, what do you th- what do you think about Cezanne? Well, he was one of my favorite artists when I was in college. I just really liked his work a lot. And um, actually, I had a couple of copies of some of his paintings uh, when I was in college. You know, as a learning tool. <laughs> But um, I really liked his color palette and um, his uh, his methods of painting were really appealing to me. I like the impressionists anyway, but um, yeah, I, I liked his color palette a lot. Yeah, I, I have a tendency. But um, as far as I mean, his yeah, I mean, he did a lot of work, and he he had a lot a wide range of things that he painted, um, different topics and. Um, you know, he did everything from still life to people to landscapes and all, all kinds of stuff, um, which was another drawing card for me, I guess. I like that he did a lot of different things. Um, uh, what, what are your impressions? of? Uh... Um, I've always liked Cezanne. I like, uh, like uh, Diane said, his color palette, and it's the Im- impression to post-impressionism. And uh, I, it, it's colors, and he did do a lot of subjects when you stop it. I never thought about what kind of subjects he used, but he did a lot of landscapes and um, and people and uh, still lifes also. So he was pretty well rounded as an artist when it came it comes to what he painted. But uh, it, yeah, in this. Uh... This video documentary kind of opened my eyes. I've 
never been a big fan of Suzanne's uh, work, but what impressed me with the documentary is how much he influenced other artists. I mean, he was kind of like the, he had such an impact on uh, a lot of the uh, later artists, uh, Picasso and, uh, and his group that he was with of the impressionists, you know, with uh, Monet and uh, Surratt and um, uh, uh, even Van Gogh, you know, and the others. And, and he, uh, 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 they, they kind of uh, followed and uh, adopted his, his technique. And today when I uh, uh, look at uh, some of the, uh, our, young artists here i see having watched this video now i see elements of suzanne you know in in their works so he had a had a uh, a profound influence you know on his work i guess i i didn't know at the time until after watching this video i'm more attracted to the post impressions yeah <laughs> the like the van gogh you know and and uh they're uh, he's more considered as a post impressionist you know and and uh and uh, who is it, uh, George uh, George Surratt, you know, and and mm-hmm. and uh, uh, Gauguin, and they uh, they were with that same group of the Impressionist group, but their works evolved into what is now the, now the art historians, art critics call the post Impressionist you know, you know, period there, and so uh, uh, for it's important that, you know, we study these, uh, these artists, you know, for our listeners, uh, who, uh, are wondering, you know, why we seem to have a tendency to discuss quite a bit of art history. Um, also for artists, it's important to have a grasp of art history because, uh, if you are fortunate enough to be involved in a, a major show or a major exhibition and an art critic comes up and says, you know, your work really reminds me of uh, Renoir, uh, his, uh, his still life period. Uh, you, if you are have studied art history, you know what he's talking about. <laughs> as an artist, it's not so much as to copy, but as to uh, to be able to also a big thing. All of us artists have to deal with, especially when we are putting our art into exhibits. Even online exhibits and contests, some of them, they require an artist statement. And so it's good if you have a bit of a grasp of this uh, art history and the art movement. So uh, that's kind of our purpose here of why we uh, discuss uh, some of this for for our listeners. And uh, we have uh, thousands of listeners across the Internet. I don't know how many of them are artists, but uh, they uh, each podcast seems to the numbers are uh, picking up. And, uh, you know, 400 to 500, uh, downloads. So, um, hopefully some of those are collectors too. <laughs> and they're being interested, interested in our work. Mm-hmm. Over, overall discussion of the post impressions, Diane, what, uh, what, what are some of your favorites that, uh, you, uh, can, can pick out in, um, well, I, Cezanne's probably the, my favorite out of that group, but I, I really don't care for some of the other ones too much. Um, I mean, I, there's there's facets of their, their work that I like, but I'm not really a fan, per se, of their whole um, body of work, I guess. Um, but I, I do see where they came from as far as, you know, coming out of the Impressionist era and going out on their own a little bit more and um, doing their more of their own thing, which is kind of what we all strive to do, I guess. Um, you know, we don't want to be just a bunch of lemmings following everybody else doing the same thing. You know, you really, it's really important for you to do your um, art in the way that speaks to you and not necessarily, you know, copying somebody else all the time. I mean, it's, imp- it, it's important in learning to do that so you can learn from the people that have come before you, but um, you need to uh, pick and choose things out of their work that'll apply to your own and make it your own. So, Constance, you want to you want to add to that? Yeah, I, 
like uh, Diane, I think it's important to uh, to learn from you know all different artists. Well, first of all, when you learn you learn about the different artists, then you learn to see all the different styles of painting, and then you learn to just pick and choose, like she said, what you know. It's you, it's hard to not be influenced in your painting by other artists. It's just it's hard. I mean, th it is going to affect your style you know so um eventually you know you just develop your own style but yeah that when that's what when they talk about the, you know, the artist's voice you know you, you develop your own you know your own voice but yes i think it's very very important to uh, uh be aware of uh, these you know other styles and uh, like me i really love the works of van gogh however mm -hmm. None of my work even looks like Van Gogh. No one will ever accuse me of doing a Van Gogh type work because I don't want to mimic you know, his work. But uh, I uh, I like the um, what captures me uh, my attention is the emotion that he is able to generate with his work, and so that now I try to uh, I try to pattern and try to. Uh, 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 bring that about, you know, in my, in my own works. And so that's, uh, you know, how, you know, Van Gogh influences me in, in that sense. A recent painting that I did of the, uh, still life of the, you know, the roses and, and the, and the, uh, 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 two vases. Uh, when I posted that on my, um, uh, Facebook page, someone commented that, you know, it's really Renoir like, that's really beautiful. Now, I was familiar with Ren Renoir's work, but I wasn't familiar with his still lives. So I went back and looked immediately, Googled it, you know, looked up and saw all of his, a lot of his still lives. Yeah, okay. That wasn't intentional, but that's just how, you know, that came, you know, came about. Maybe I had seen a few of his still lives in the past. It kind of, you know, it, it, it came about. So, uh, but no one would ever accuse me of doing a, a Cezanne type work because, I I think color is way too bright, and his perspective is off. <laughs> Not intentionally. I won't do one intentionally. Yeah. <laughs> well, in school they had us copy a art, you know, famous artists where we go into like museums mm -hmm. and stuff, and they tell you to copy their, you know, pick a painting or whatever and copy it. And you learn a lot by doing that because you. Um, kind of step into their sh shoes as much as you can I guess but you can see where they come from and where how they're mixing their colors and how they're combining things and it's not necessarily like um, you're not like trying to copy it as a forger kind of would copy it you know right. paintbrush by paintbrush but you're getting the gist of what the painting is about it, when you're actually copying it like that you're you're in um, you can understand it more than you can if you're just looking at it, I guess. So you you learn things that you wouldn't see just looking at the painting. Yep. Yeah, it's it's an interesting thing. The advantage of going to art school, yeah. Like me, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just well. You you can send yourself to art school without actually going by doing a lot of things that you have been have been doing. You know, there's uh. Well, that's like the Kelly Folsom's uh, vital art sessions. You know, she, I've learned quite a bit from, you know, from her, uh, her sessions and, uh, and all of her lessons, you know, she always says she sets it up with, you know, these little 30 minute videos. And so we learn about the, uh, you know, uh, her, her, uh, what color she uses, how to mix to get the different colors. And of course she, does a really good job of talking as she's painting, you know, of, of explaining uh, why she's putting down this this paint stroke here or there. And she's also, I think it's really funny, she's also not afraid to admit she makes a mistake. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. Let's, let's correct that. <laughs> it just cracks me up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you know, <laughs> well, that's all artists do. They You put a, you know, put stuff down and you fix it and you, <laughs> you put some more stuff down and you fix it. I mean, that's kind of how it the whole process is, you know, you're always I tried to watch other, other, yeah. And you know, until I started watching Kelly and some other artists paint and, 
because before I always took from a teacher that in person, you know, and uh, they kind of help you along as you do and stuff. But um, when you had watch different artists paint or do, paint instruction paintings, you learn about, you know, it's always making adjustments to the painting to correct what you're not doing correctly to begin with. I mean, the eye might not be exactly where it's supposed to or the eyebrow or something or your, uh, so you can't constantly make um, corrections through all your, while you're painting, you know, so. Yeah. yeah. So not to be so hard on yourself. You know, her yeah. Mm -hmm. Happy painting, you know, have fun, you know, push, push some paint around, you know, and, and uh, so they, and, and sometimes your first mark is probably better than your second or your third, you know, and, and uh, when studying, uh, watching these documentaries of, of uh, you know, these, uh, you know, now famous artists, you know, like the Impressionist group, they were all radicals. They were, they, they got together, their name Impressionist was given to them by a critic as a derogatory meaning, you know, that they weren't really paintings. They were impressionists. They were impression of a painting, yeah. and, and, you know, in France. And they were, you know, at that time, up that, you know, up in the 1880s, uh, in the 1880s, they were the, they were the academy art, you know, it's called the academy art style and the you know, more of the, the, you know, traditional and the, and there was, there was, there was all the studio, no idea, no concept of going out and painting something. And it was the post impressions, you know, Van Gogh and, and, a lot, and Gauguin and, a lot, and that, that, and, and all of them, Monet, you know, they all, uh, and came out with the, you know, started out being outdoor painting. Now it has a fancy title of plain air. Yeah. <laughs> and they were all just complete, you know, complete radicals. And now, they're pretty much mainstay and amongst uh, art lovers, their works is the, the most loved, you know, but at the time they were, they were considered, uh, you know, kind of, kind of radical and everything, but watching these videos and then listen when they, uh, as they got together, they were influencing each other and teaching each other. It really reminded me of, you know, the Kelly Folsom's class. It reminded me of our meeting, like, Diane, just before uh, you came on, I was complimenting uh, Constance of how so many times her recommendations have been good for me. You know, supplies to buy, sources of supplies, and and uh, you know, try this and try that. And then I said, "Yeah, and Diane, same way. When you you got me started oil painting again, <laughs> and, uh, walnut oil, you know." And so our little group alone. I think we, I don't know if we're influencing each other as far as our, our, our type of art we're doing, but as far as, as uh, inspiring and motivating and, and sharing, like folks, just before we uh, started the podcast, Diane had taken a, uh, a, a pastel challenge and she was showing us, you know, two results. And one of them was really fantastic, but that eyeball, that <laughs> realistic, you know, <laughs> there were, you know, a couple of animals and, and before Constance was involved, what was a couple months ago, you were in that, uh, that 30 day strata. Painting. Yeah. Painting. Yeah. Daily, daily painting. But then I, uh, I last week, you know, I, I had my, uh, charcoal, uh, pencil set had arrived. So I finally broke it out and I did, and I did a, a self, self portrait drawing. I was showing it to uh, Diane, and I was surprised. It came out. It looked like me. <laughs> so, none of this, I, I know for a fact, none of this had I, us not meeting like this and sharing, none of that would have come about had I been all by myself. And artists from... It's so much easier nowadays, nowadays to stay in contact with other artist friends because of the platform that we're on right now. I mean, it's just, mm -hmm. you know, and you keep in, it's a good way to keep yourself grounded. And, and, uh, it's just, sometimes it's just very inspirational to talk to each other. Um, yeah. And we, so it kind of helps you work through your artist problems or where you're stuck or, 
you know, and that's the point of being influenced by each other, you know, is to, to support and help each other. That's why I like, that's what main reason I like it is because it is um, absolutely and that, that's, uplifting. That segs, segues me into a pitch to, uh, if we have some artist listeners, please, you're always welcome, you know, to join us. And uh, we could uh, we could use some uh, some more ideals and some more you know share your share your thoughts. We don't buy it. <laughs> don't buy it. If you don't want to, uh, uh, always on the on the notice on the uh, talkartpodcast.com uh, page at the bottom. I always have an open invitation. Of course, all the information of how to the log on to the Zoom link and the time are each week. In the subject, uh, if you don't want to uh, participate in the podcast discussion, I can mute you. And you can just sit there and be our audience. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. We do talk about a good 30, sometimes 40 minutes before we start the recording, just about. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So the show and tell and what you've been up to. And yeah. yeah. You know, so uh, please, uh, we're, I hope you, uh, you, Find us uh, entertaining and, and our, for our artist listeners, uh, feel motivated, you know, to join us. It's, uh, we've been doing this, God, how long, what, three years now, right? At least. Yeah. yeah. We didn't do the podcast, start the podcast up until, well, 90 episodes ago. <laughs> but uh, it's, you get in, what's good is you get into a habit to schedule that time to meet with other people to discuss things. You know, and that's, yeah. that's, it's, it's really helpful, but sometimes it's hard for people to get into that, that time scheduling of doing it all the time. You know, if you have a job that keeps you away from it at a certain time, then, but still, you know, some people can uh, listen really, to us. I want to say to you too, I thank you. I really look forward to every Monday. I look forward to every Monday to our, our, our brief, you know, our meeting, you know, get, getting together with well, yeah, and I, I think it's important for all three of us because we're all in situations where we're kind of on our, you know, by ourselves. We're out, mm-hmm. like Constance and I are out on farms or, you know, applied your, by yourself where you live. So it's, we're really the only people that we talk to about art on a you know, regular basis. And that's, yeah. that's important. Like, you know, just sharing like stuff we've found or, you know, other people don't understand like a new brush or something, mm-hmm. you know, or like Clyde getting got excited over new art pencils supplies. and things. It's like, yeah, we can understand that. So it's, you know, you feel good to share it, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm-hmm. And uh, Ann Farley, who was one of our classmates with the Paul Klein course, she posted on, on Facebook uh, some drawings that she did, uh, I guess, in, I think she said in 2016 or whatever, she was over in the, in France and Spain. And so she filled a sketchbook up of all kinds of sketches. And she said she, uh, somebody had had and they're really wonderful sketches. And uh, someone had asked her what she used. And she used the, you know, micron pins. I'd heard that term several different times. So I looked at the, <laughs> and I'm going to order myself a set of micron pins. <laughs> Well, now, see, I've never heard of micron <laughs> pens. Tell me what they are. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, they're, Let me write that down. I'll go see what that's about. More expensive than the regular pen. <laughs> They're like little markers. But they have different size tips on them. And stuff. Oh, okay. Different colors, too. It's the ink. The ink is the acid-free, and it doesn't bleed, and uh, they're also it's waterproof, and uh, that's always a big deal, especially if you do pen drawings or whatever, and uh, it, uh, uh, you know, will sometimes bleed through the paper regardless of how thick your paper is. Uh, these, mm-hmm. you know, work, you know, for that. So that's what attracted me. I, when I was reading it on the Blick uh, uh, sales you know, store, I, I was reading, reading the technical specifications of it and everything. So, um, so yeah, that's going to be my next order. It's on, on my next next order to uh, for some uh, micro. <laughs> But then again, I never would have known that if I hadn't been associated with, you know, another artist, you know, in in a way. And this, these, looking at these uh, historical videos of uh, these, you know, artists, 
and making art history and the uh, uh, art movements. That's the central point in all of them. They all got together and they shared and they supported each other. So we are doing a time honored thing. <laughs> yeah, we're, with, with a new age twist. <laughs> twist, yeah. <laughs> we're, we're using that. <laughs> Using modern modern technology, you know, to our advantage, and I'm sure that if this technology was available back then, there would have been a lot more than just those five or six. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Seven. Well, people will then were limited to their own area, and you know, anybody that came into the area, like they, they could join in, but um, you didn't know people across the globe. Like, I mean, you guys are in Oklahoma, I'm in Maryland, so I mean, we well, we never. I mean, I've never met you guys in person, but we've been talking for a few years mm -hmm. now, so it's yeah, you know. absolutely, you know, and, uh, and that's the beauty of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> before, we, before we wrap up here, uh, what I like on the on the video when it's talking about the uh, you know forgotten post impressionists, um, they met when the the narrator when he mentioned uh, Van Gogh, yeah, there was that group. They were of uh, the group. They were from different social economic you know, classes, but they accepted Van Gogh, even though he was uh, uh, a drunk all the time. <laughs> and he didn't bathe. Not the easiest person to get along with. <laughs> he didn't bathe very often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, but they accepted him anyhow, you know, because they, for his part. And that, that's a wonderful thing about, you know, they, you know, artists, we can kind of ignore some of the other things and the, we don't have to worry about that with new technology. <laughs> That's true. Until they invent smell -o vision or something. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure we're a lot uh, better. We've had better hygiene than he did, I guess. <laughs> Everything. Oh, no, that's right. Uh, okay, with that, uh, <laughs> this is a good point to wrap this, cut this episode off before we head down, <laughs> head down a bad road. <laughs> Another road. But uh, you have been listening to the Artist Friends Podcast, episode 90 for March the 29th, the last one for the month of March. We've got a fantastic spring coming up here. And before I say goodbye, I want to wish Diane and Constance. Next weekend is Easter. I want to wish you a very, very happy Easter and a very happy, you know, happy spring and happy painting. Same thing to our listeners. Have a very, very happy Easter. And uh, hopefully all your, all your prayers will be answered and uh, you will uh, enjoy your Easter gatherings as much as possible, even with the, with the pandemic, you know, uh, it's uh important time of the year so bye-bye to diane and constance and i'll let diane say goodbye to everybody hi clyde bye constance good night everyone good night clyde good night diane good night everybody thanks for listening to everybody i'll second that thank you for listening and again have a very happy easter The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www.dianehuntstudio.com. Constance Bronson at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash C B R O S N A N S Clyde J Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you would like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends podcast, please email cjkale at sign mystery dash otr.com. If you enjoy these podcasts, please give us a thumbs up or a star rating. And most of all, send us your comments. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons license.